so uh, firstly congratulations on your victory thank you very much <laughs> still and, um thinking in <laughs> So how has this whole journey been for you I mean to represent a cuisine which is so vast in itself and you know to represent the country Um well obviously it is a it is definitely such a proud moment to represent uh, Punjab and Punjabi food but um of course first and foremost I am Singaporean and um Singapore itself is a melting pot of so many cultures and i think that has also influenced um the way i've cooked and and the flavors that i brought forward a very simple example would be a uh, saag so when saag was brought to singapore by the punjabis and by you know anyone from india who came back back during the british rule it was a vegetarian dish as as pretty much it is still in india but because of evolution uh, you know they used to stay in the kampung so the kampungs are the the houses that you know were were not these high rise houses that we have now but like in the in the villages they used to hunt wild boar so it became saag suri which is unheard of in india right because of so many so because of all the cultural uh, sensitivities nobody would ever think of making saag suri but it's a thing in singapore and malaysia <laughs> so when you talk about blending two different cuisines into one new dish what was the best blend that you you know thought of making or you made during your journey with master chef um the judges might disagree but i actually thought the dish that i made um if i'm not wrong it was episode 6 or episode 7 the the dish that i called bangkok partha i thought that was pretty pretty intelligent on my end not to if i if i say so myself uh, so we have a bang uh, we have a bangan partha at the bottom that is infused with basil and then the thai flavors come in with the king oyster mushrooms with you know basil again and some um smoked chili and then there's also sold the nori papadam which is seaweed so yeah many layers and i think it actually went well but i think they found it like you know too much umami at one go <laughs> but actually it's very difficult to at times mix too many flavors because somewhere the indian flavors have a very different hint of spice where in the asian flavors have a very different hint of spice and even the rice changes with both the regions so how do you mix oh, that yeah, sure. um well uh, as as the cliche goes in the competition taste is king so you got to keep tasting 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 to see if it works and if it doesn't work um you have one hour so you better be ready to do something else <laughs> So how pressurizing was it for you in terms of you know creating new cuisines with every challenge that you all had Um I think the pressure was not on creating new cuisines it it was actually creating a dish that is actually true to who I am as a person the type of food that I like to eat the type of food that I like to cook as well So that was the main challenge of putting me on a plate and I think uh doing that actually got me pretty far in the competition the judges um you know as as they tasted as the weeks went on they really started to identify that okay this is the this is the flavor profile that you expect with in the bar um you know when he brings a plate of food to you get ready to sit down because you might get blown away because the flavors are so strong um yeah but balancing um asian flavors oriental flavors with indian flavors is challenging but not impossible so what is that one dish you think did not go well how you must have planned but it did not you know really impress you or the judges <laughs> oh that would be definitely the dish where i forgot to plate my prawns uh i left my prawns in the oven and you know everything else was ready i had the roti taco ready I had the raita ready to go. I had the salad, and uh, the reason was because the rotis were not, co- you know, cooperating with me. They were not puffing up as a normal fulka would do. But yeah, and then in the in the in the pressure of trying to get the rotis done right, I completely forgot that I prawns in the oven, and then the countdown began. And the next thing I knew, my prawns are in the oven, and time is up. Oh, <laughs> that would be a very uh... I just can't, you know, name the feeling, but you know, you you'd feel so disappointed that I did everything. 
Yes, I, 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 you're absolutely right, Shruti. I mean, I did everything except put the prawns on the plate. That's literally the only thing I forgot. And it was very demoralizing. It was very heartbreaking, especially going into um, such a valuable challenge that came after that, which was the power pin. And because I didn't plate my prawns, I didn't get to fight for the power pin, which was at that point in time demoralizing. In hindsight, seeing what the power pin has done to other contestants, I, I'm glad I don't have it. <laughs> So any any of the contestants that you saw for the longest of time would have been the most you know a threat to you in terms of the winning race. Um, to be very very fair and honest, I think everyone in the top twelve was a threat. There was no there was no wiggle room per se. Like um, you know, usually when you watch Master Chef, you you sort of you sort of go like. You know, I think this person will be top six, but he'll fizzle out. Wow, there was nothing like that. It was really, um, realistically, on that day, the person that got eliminated was just having a bad day. <laughs> so I'm glad that, you know, despite having a bad day with the prawns, you still, you know, managed to go ahead with the journey and obviously you lifted the trophy. Yeah, it was, it was very lucky on my end and... Um, I think, uh, as they say, Uparwala <laughs> Dekra Tha, you know, protecting me. Someone's looking at me from above to ensure that the worst day in my kitchen was a non elimination day. Oh boy. So, any of the challenges that you loved the most that you know you would try to do something again or recreate something again in that way? Uh, I think two challenges that really stand out for me, um, or oh, sorry, three challenges that really stand out for me. One was definitely the second episode where I made the egg dish for Chef Shashi Chilea. I think for me, just meeting my idol was was unreal, and and now he's just talking to me as though I'm a friend. You know, he's just DMing me on Instagram like, "Hey, how are you doing? Congratulations!" It's unreal. Like this person was, you know, so-called unreachable prior to the competition, and um, I think just the way things have developed and um, the success of that dish leading to what has happened, super unreal. And I think the second challenge for me that was um, what I feel was a turning point for me was the recreation of uh, Chef Malcolm's dish, the fish more soup. It was such a technical challenge and I think that just uh, put into perspective for me that, you know what, yes, I can be a chef, I can create very delicate and um, beautiful looking subtle dishes with uh, massive flavor profiles that are muted so you enjoy everything and uh, of course for me my favorite challenge was the finale <laughs> indeed that that should be the most favorite because it got you the best so uh you know when we say indian cuisine has both the non-vegetarian food as well as the vegetarian food so yes what kind of focus do you think the vegetarian food gets in such massive uh, kitchens according to you especially on the international place so i think we are living in a very interesting time in in terms of um, how we consume food and how we consume content about food i think these two things are right. very different at the same time they're very similar and um, it comes down to whether or not something looks visually appealing as they say, you eat with your eyes first and um, before you eat anything, your phone camera eats everything, right? It needs to look good, it needs to look great for the gram and uh, I think vegetables play such an important role now because they give you pops of colour, pops of crunch, pops of, um, you know, uh, earthiness that you cannot get from proteins. And I think being Punjabi myself, uh, coming from a Sikh family who is, you know, 80% vegetarian, and I was vegetarian personally myself for eight years. Um, being, being vegetarian forward and really coming back to the roots, which is the farms of Punjab, right? Where nothing else grows except vegetarian, vegetables, right? I think that for me was such a beautiful message that I could bring across. Like people tasted, you know, simple things like halwa and they go like, wow, I didn't know you could do pumpkin like that. I didn't know pumpkin should be, could be so diverse. It could be so robust. But because everybody thinks of pumpkin as this uh, very sweet vegetable. Right. But you know, Punjabi, masala, tonke ponde, you know, everything is, <laughs> it's, it's flavorful, that's ghee, there's fat in there. It's, it's yummy and you want to keep eating it. 
there any such indian a very desi normal dish that you think was a astonishing factor for singapore um so it comes back to that dish uh the dish that i i called majida halwa and um so i had a crescent of uh, the pumpkin and at the bottom i did khichdi pumpkin khichdi and everyone was blown away because of the texture there was dal in it there's uh, you know chawal in it there's this pops of uh, you know i kept some of the pumpkin whole so there's you know a little bit of sweet crunchy bits but they just enjoyed the entire mouth feel of the dish whereas for us khichdi is like you know koi bimar aadmi khata hai jab bimar hota hai to khichdi de do but to them they of course yes we master chef it up with a lot of masala and yeah. a lot of spice and a lot of balance a lot of sweetness a little bit of uh, you know vinegar a little bit of sourness as well so it really gave you a very nice texture on your palate but kitchen who would have thought right <laughs> so you know when we talk about uh, indian cuisine in the city cities of singapore um, there are very few names that come in so now what do you think that further after winning this what are you planning ahead as you already have a business that i remember so apart from that what are you yeah. planning ahead so i've been truly blessed with this opportunity now and winning the competition has uh, has blessed me enough to uh, it depends on where you are where you sit whether you're a customer who's a loyal customer but i've been blessed enough to close the home based business now and actually start doing professional pop ups outside and i have a few lined up till the end of the year at least and even in january already uh I've been so blessed to work with some amazing chefs and a lot of things are in the works and I can't reveal so many things as yet because they're not confirmed um but coming up pretty soon I will be doing um a pop up with uh, my fellow contestant Ruben who oh, wow. who is very vegetarian forward so we're doing a uniquely singaporean brunch and uh is to change the perception of brunch I mean I'm not sure what the how how it works in um in in India but when you think of brunch you think of eggs benedict avo toast you know at at maximum you you think of a bombay toast something like that there's nothing really unique about it in terms of brunch is a very western concept right so we are doing that are very singaporean to brunch so we're doing your eggs and your bread but with singaporean with like chili crab with you know like spiced chicken with um with ikan bilis which is like little fried anchovies and all of that to yeah. really bring up the singaporean palate in in brunch and then after that <clears throat> we one of the judges chef damian um the tall gentleman he has invited me i'm very honored to to cook at his restaurant for his his restaurant's second anniversary and i'll be doing a rendition of what i explained to you earlier in the show of a yeah. uh, no saag with a protein so i'll be doing saag bakri with charcoal rotis and raita with like a caramelized pineapple and all of that so I'm really looking forward to it it's been such a blessing and I'm so happy with for everything so uh now that you know even master chef india has just launched again so do you think that you know it would okay. be a nice platform for you also to represent something very different you know oh, to come uh, i mean if you know anyone and if they want me to be you know a guest on there i'm i'm very happy to <laughs> i think i could bring a different uh, dynamic cuz um it it depends on the country each country has has its own version of master chef and and for a good reason because nobody can do the local food the way the locals do right right There's no there is it's second to none and uh, master chef india nobody can compare to the indian food but if i come in and tell you okay i want an asian dish aha you know that could be something that could be a challenging dish a challenge for for the contestant so yeah if they do contact me and if they're listening to this interview i'm all ears and i'm willing to come down <laughs> so that would be very interesting in that case because it would add a new flavor to what you know the the contestants often cook so yeah. you know apart from that now that there are so many other reality shows so what do you think i are, are you planning to focus on that or you are you planning to have a professional journey ahead um i think right now the <clears throat> uh the market in singapore at least i'm not sure about how it is in india but in singapore 
the chefing market is is very unique in terms of it's saturated but unsaturated at the same time. If you are a unique personality, it's very unsaturated. So I'm in that unique position where everyone looks at Indian food in Singapore as North Indian and South Indian. There is no in between. And even if you go to South Indian places in Singapore, you get very traditional. You get your dosas, you get your idli sambar, you get your banana leaves. So, but if you go to South India, you realize that the area where they are eating dosas and idli sambars compared to the areas that they are eating banana leaf, geographically they are very far away. But it's just been put together as this is South Indian food, which is really not. There's so much in between that we are not seeing, right? And similarly for Punjabi food, it's just classified as chalo pari to see North Indian. You know, your food is North Indian, but it is not because if you go to a North Indian restaurant, if you order, you know, uh, chicken tikka, that's Mughalai, it's not Punjabi, right? But if you order Bengan Parta, that's, you know, some people in Sindh will say, Paji eta saddawa, and some people in, in Punjab will say, Neni Paji saddawa. You know, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of contention, but it is just very generalized and say, no, 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 this is North Indian food. <laughs> but to specifically do a modern representation and relatively vegetarian forward Punjabi food in Singapore, I think at the moment it doesn't exist. So what kept inspiring you to cook? I mean, what is that inspiration that you continued cooking from the early my, age? From the early days of my life, the not to sound cliche, but the biggest inspiration for me was langar. Was Gurdwari ka langar. Anna? Because my dad used to bring me to the Gurdwara when I was five and everybody would gravitate towards the low to start making rotis because that is the one that really needed the most help, right? That is the one that takes the most long time, the most amount of effort. And I was a five-year-old kid, like nobody's going to trust me to stand in front of a raging fire and flip rotis. So I gravitated towards the sevadars who were you know, mixing these massive vats of dal and massive vats of sabji, massive, massive vats of chole. And I was just so fascinated that, you know, Pajinia uh, thoda ja powder pata and the taste has completely changed. The the color has completely changed. It, it was a science to me. And like, I'm wondering like, wow, this is fascinating. And as we go along, we don't taste it there. We, we take it out and we taste it. So, you know, juta na hove. Right. For langar, everybody to eat fresh. So we taste it and as I'm tasting, I'm like, wow, the, the flavor has changed. This has become that, that has become this. And that was the inspiration for me to really go down into the cooking the cooking road. <clears throat> any, uh, any such dish that, you know, you will always keep it closest to your heart. I mean, that is one thing that, you know, you will never forget cooking or you'll never forget its flavor. Cooking, <laughs> <laughs> cooking or eating? <laughs> You know, there's this kabhi hota hai na jaise mom ke haath ka koi aisa halwa ya koi aisi cheez yeah um i think um a flavor for me that is that cannot be replicated is my mom's cha that is one and my grandmother in law's mutter paneer i think I have tried mutter paneer. I have personally tried to cook mutter paneer as well, but nothing comes close to the one that my grandmother-in-law makes. I, I think it's it's crazy. She's trying to teach it to me, but I don't know why. Ode hat da hoor swadya, sade hat da hoor swadya. Unke hat mein pyar hota hai, thoda extra wala. Wo swadi change ho jata hai. Chalo try karte hai. I'll buy a whole box of pyar and see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's indeed. So, um... Now, uh, putting Punjabi cuisine across Singapore, what, uh, you know, what is that one dish that you think is very similar to what Singaporeans eat, according to you? Um, Punjabi cuisine and Singaporean cuisine. I mean, there are some similarities, like um, if you talk about Mughalai Punjabi cuisine, then you have something uh, that the Hyderabadis as well, which is keema. Keema is very popular in Singapore. And um, 
from from the Malay diaspora, they absolutely love kima, especially lamb. Or you know, sometimes they like I said because of the the migration, the dish has also evolved, right? So they actually sometimes even make it with beef, right? And um, it, it's because they they have evolved the dish to their personal liking, their personal taste. So kima is one that I think comes pretty close. The next one is of course, um, jo ham uh, jo apa wo wo patli dal jo yellow yellow rang ki dal jo hoti hai. Yeah, that has become very common in a lot of our uh, our prata places in Singapore. Not prata, but we do roti prata, which is a very South Indian dish where they flip the dough like almost like a pizza, and then they roll it up again. So it's like a like a croissant almost, and it's eaten with dal or it's eaten with sambar, which is you know like a idli sambar kind of sambar. But the dal has evolved. It 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 came as one thing, and it's now completely something different. So I wrap my questions here. But it was indeed a, a very delicious conversation that we had. <laughs> All right, I'll wrap it here. Please have a great day ahead and congratulations again. Thank you, Shruti. Right. Have a Thank good day. Thank you so much. Have a good day.